So let's try some examples on series RLC circuit. So example one, a series RLC circuit has resistance 80 ohms, inductance 240 millihenries, and capacitance 5 millifarad. Now if the input voltage V of T is equal to 10 cos 2T, find the current flowing through the circuit. So how do we solve this problem? Now from the circuit, we have the resistance to be 80 ohms. We have the inductance to be 240 millihenries. And then we also have the capacitance to be 5 millifarad. And then we have the input voltage, that is V of T, to be equal to 10 cos 2t and then we are asked to find the current flowing through the circuit now representing the information in the circuit we have this to be the source voltage that is v of t so we have the resistor in series with the inductor and that is also in series with the capacitor And then we have current I of T flowing through the circuit. So this is R, L, and then C. Now to find the current flowing through the circuit, we first of all need to find the impedance of the circuit. Now the impedance of a series RLC circuit is given by Z equals the square root of R square plus into bracket XL minus XC all square where R is the resistance XL is the inductive reactance and then XC is the capacitive reactance now if XL is greater than XC, then what this primarily means is that the overall impedance of the circuit is inductive, hence the current is said to lag the voltage. And also if XC is greater than XL, then the overall impedance of the circuit is capacitive and the current is said to lead the voltage also if you want to find the phase angle between the current and the voltage that is given by phi equals tan inverse of xl minus xc divided by r Also, you can express the impedance of this RLC circuit in the rectangular form as Z equals R plus JXL minus JXC. And then with this, you can convert this from the rectangular form to the polar form. Now, when you do that, you are going to have the impedance and the phase angle. So there wouldn't be any need to calculate the phase angle using this formula. Now let's move on as we find the impedance for this circuit and also the current that flows through this circuit. So to find the impedance of this circuit, now we have the value of R, which is 80 ohms. We need to find the value of XL and then XC. So let's do that. Now from this voltage signal, Let's call this equation 1 and then let's compare this equation to the general form of a sinusoidal wave. So let's call this V1 of T and then the general equation of a sinusoidal signal to be V2 of T and that is Vm cos omega T 
plus 5. So comparing these two equations, you realize that omega is equal to 2. Therefore, we have omega to be 2 rad per second. So this is the value of omega. Now let's find the value of XL. So XL is given by omega times L. And then we have omega to be 2. And then we have L to be 240 millihenries. So that is 240 times 10 exponent negative 3. And then we are going to have XL to be equal to 0 0.48 ohms. So this is the value of XL. Now let's move on as we find the value of XC. So also for XC, that is given by 1 over omega C. And that is equal to 1 over 2 times. Now for C, we have 5 millifarad. So that is 5 times 10 exponent negative 3. And then that also gives 100 ohms. So we have XC to be 100 ohms. Now since XC is greater than XL, then it means that the overall impedance of the circuit is capacitive. Hence, the current is going to lead the voltage. Now let's move on to find the impedance. So we have Z equals from this relation we have R to be 80, so 80 plus J 0 0.48 minus J 100, and that is equal to 80 minus 0 0.48 minus 100 gives negative 99.52. So we have negative J 99.52 ohms. Now let's convert this value to the polar form. So we are going to have 127.688 polar negative 51.206 degrees. So this is the polar form of the impedance. Now if you want to find the current that is I of T, First of all, let's find the value of the current I in the phasor domain form, or better still, the polar form. So this current I is given by the voltage divided by the impedance. So this V is the source voltage, and then Z is the impedance we have here. Now we have the source voltage to be in the time domain form, that is V of T equals 10 cos 2T. Now let's convert this from the time domain to the phasor domain. So that's going to be 10 polar the phase angle. Now the phase angle is 0, so that's going to be 10 polar 0. Divided by, we have 127.688 polar negative 51.8. 206. Therefore, we have I equals 10 divided by 127.688 gives 0 0.0783 polar 0 minus negative 51.206 gives positive 51.206. So, this is the value of the current that is in the phasor domain now let's convert this back to the time domain so that's going to be i of t equals 0 0.0783 now because this value is too small let's convert this to milliampers so we are going to move three decimal places to the right so one two three so we have 78.3 milliampers. So 78.3. 
cos from v of t we have cos 2t so 2t and then plus the phase angle 51.206 degrees so this is the value of current i of t that flows through this circuit now the phase angle that is phi is giving us negative 51.206 so that is the phase angle negative 51.206 degrees now negative in the sense that the overall impedance of the circuit is capacitive hence the current is going to lead the voltage so the current is going to lead the voltage by 51.206 degrees now you can as well visualize this comparing i of t to v of t you realize that we have the phase angle of i of t to be 51.206 degrees and that of v of t to be zero now since the phase angle of i of t is positive what this primarily means is that the current is going to lead the voltage by this value that is 51.206 degrees now let's move on to the next example so to the second example we are going to find the current i in the circuit when v s of t is 50 cos 200 t now we have the resistance to be 10 ohms the capacitance to be 5 millifarad and also the inductance to be 20 millihenries so to find the value of i we first of all need to find the impedance of the circuit and then we divide the voltage by the impedance to get the value of current flowing in the circuit so that's exactly what we are going to do here so we have the resistance to be 10 ohms we have the capacitance to be 5 millifarad and also the inductance to be 20 millihenries now since the impedance of the circuit is given by z equals r plus jxl minus jxc let's find the values of xl and then xc now even before we do that we need to know the value of omega so comparing the general equation of a sinusoidal signal that is given by v of t equals vm cos omega t plus phi now comparing this to the source voltage we have omega to be equal to 200 therefore omega is equal to 200 rad per second now let's move on as we find the values of xl and then xc so for xl that's given by omega times l we have omega to be 200 times l that is 20 millihenries so 20 times 10 exponent negative 3 and that gives 4 ohms so we have xl to be 4 ohms also for xc xc is given by 1 over omega c so that is also equal to 1 over 200 times 5 millifarad so that is 5 times 10 exponent negative 3 and then that is also equal to 1 therefore we have xc to be equal to 1 ohm now from z we are going to have the impedance z to be equal to r is 10 so 10 plus j4 minus j1 which is the same as j and that is equal to 10 plus j3 so we have 10 plus j3 ohms 
Now since XL is greater than XC, what this primarily means is that the overall impedance of the circuit is inductive, hence the current is going to lag the voltage. Now let's convert this from the rectangular form to the polar form. So that's going to be 10.440 polar 16.699 ohms. So this is the value of the impedance in the polar form. Now let's find the value of current flowing through the circuit. So that is given by I equals the source voltage divided by the impedance. Now we have the source voltage to be 50 cos 200T. Now converting this to the phasor domain, that's going to be 50 polar 0 because the phase angle is 0. So 50 polar 0 divided by the impedance, we have 10.440 16.699 so that is equal to 50 divided by 10.440 gives 4.789 polar 0 minus this value gives negative of it so negative 16.699 so this is the value of the current in the phasor domain form Let's convert that to the time domain. So that is equal to 4.789 cos 200T. So 200T. And then the phase angle minus 16.699 degrees. So this is the value of I of T. That is the current flowing through this circuit. So the phase angle between the current and the voltage can be obtained from the impedance that is 16.699 degrees. So this is the phase angle between the current and the voltage. Now because we have the value of phi to be positive, what this primarily means is that the impedance of the circuit is inductive, hence the current lags the voltage by 16.699 degrees also considering i of t and then v of t you realize that the phase angle for the current is negative 16.699 which means that the current is lagging the voltage by this value so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and see you in my next video bye bye